did we get here, folks? How did a simple comment in an achievement guide lead to two lovable doofuses getting their own cartoon show? That really is a testament to the power of the internet, that something so minor can become something much grander, even if it makes no goddamn sense. X-Ray and Vav, which contrary to the name is not a medical pornography, is a superhero cartoon based off the alter egos of Gavin Free and Ray Narvarez... N N Navarez... Narvez? Nar Nar Ray, your name gives me so much trouble, I don't know why, it just does. Written and directed by Lindsay Jones and Jordan Swears, and animated by Patrick Rodriguez and Peter Sorensen, it's Rooster Teeth's first attempt at a regular cartoon that's not anime-based, based off of old Cartoon Network superhero shows that I, quite frankly, was never a fan of even as a kid. I don't know, I just get secondhand embarrassment really easily, and this show is exactly the kind of cringeworthy catastrophe that no would normally send me hauling ass out of the room with my eyes covered by my hands. That, and I tend to find these shows not very well written. I mean, if you've seen one kind of filler episode for these shows, you have seen them all. But hey, maybe this show does it different. Keep in mind, it's only four episodes long, so this is kind of a so far review. So the plot is, well, come on, you've seen these kinds of shows. Two dudes decide they want to save the city from crime and corruption and decide, of all things, to be superheroes. But it is only with the help of a purple-haired scientist with a room full of gadgets that I begin to realize that goal. Whoa, what the fuck, giant rat? Whoa, hey now, you can't use that kind of language on TV. Oh, right. Internet, right, right. Okay, yeah, never mind, keep going. Excuse you? This is an orbicular robotic friend, or ORF for short. Greetings, how are you functioning today? Oh, look at the little robot, he's so cute. Look at it, he's so adorable. See how adorable he is. Language input does not compute. Please speak English. Fuck you! I don't have to take that kind of shit from a floating Christmas ornament. Why don't you come say that to my face, you li- I'm gonna need a moment, folks. We'll be right back. <laughs> With new equipment and man-made sewer powers, they finally go from two dudes wearing blankets for capes to the beginnings of the stuff of legends. And I'm amazed I could say that and keep a straight face. That's about it as far as original stuff goes. If you really want to know more about the content of the show, just watch Achievement Hunter videos because it references that about as frequently as Castle references Firefly. I don't get what it is with all the self-references Rooster Teeth has been throwing into their shows of late. X-Ray and Fab, Ten Little Roosters, hell, even Ruby is guilty of it. I mean, Ten Little Roosters I get, because the plot essentially revolves around your knowledge of Rooster Teeth lore to predict each murder, but as to the rest, I just don't get the point, and X-Ray and Vav are the guiltiest by far. This is an Achievement Hunter show. Everything about it screams Achievement Hunter, as if it only exists to either validate their existence or fuel their ego, most likely the latter. There are characters ripped right out of Let's Plays and turned into either heroes or villains. Ryan is essentially playing himself in his Minecraft skin. Although, judging by his eyes, I'm guessing this version of Ryan also did three lines of coke before coming on screen. I said this before, people. When you become a show that's purely references, then... That's all you are, a show that makes a lot of references. You're not saying anything, all you're doing is going, See what I did there? I referenced the thing. That's great once in a while, but when you do it too much, it stops being clever and just starts being, well... Stupid. I don't know if there's really much point in talking about the voice acting for the show, because as far as the main characters are concerned, it's not voice acting. Gavin and Ray are just being themselves, no more, no less. There's no point in them actually acting, as the characters are basically just more over-the-top versions of themselves, if it is at all possible to be more over-the-top than they already are. Hell, even Lindsay is basically playing herself, and Ryan is... Well, let's be totally honest here and call it like it is. As for the others, well, Barbara is adorable as Orf, and Patrick is hilarious as the mayor, and special mention must be made to Caden as the top henchman that really needs a name. And Jeff as the core pirate? I mean, it's Jeff with a pirate's voice, what's not to like? But there is no comparison to the best character in the entire show, the man we must all bow down to and obey, the god of the show that is X-Ray and Vav. Yeah, when you said I'd be filming two guys in costumes in an alley, I was expecting something way different. Rusty Bonjour. 
Rusty is my favorite. There is no one else. He takes no shit, he gives no shits, he's drunk about 90% of the time, but he's also probably one of the wisest and most interesting characters the show has right now. Why? Well, we don't really know that much about him or his past, but he has connections to the Core Pirate and seems to know just about everything that's going on. Who are you, Rusty? Who are you? Whoever he is, his genius is unparalleled, and you should listen to everything he says and do everything he does. Jesus Christ! Except beat up grandma. The only thing that'll get you is five to seven for assault. The art style is very pretty for what it is, and compared to the old 90s cartoons, it actually surpasses them, but it's a tad bit inconsistent as well. What do I mean by that? Well, look at the art for X-Ray and Vav. It's detailed, there are shadows in the right places, even their noses are the right shape and size. Well, Gavin's might be scaled down a bit, but you get what I mean. Now look at Hilda. Yeah, something got lost in translation, I'm just saying. Well, it makes sense. I mean, as we all know, women are so much harder to animate than men are. But hey, it's colorful, it's flashy, and all around it's visually appealing, so it's a pass. And I'll give the show this, at least it clearly is an X-Ray and Vav story, as opposed to other superhero cartoons, where the hero is a blundering idiot and the sidekick is the one who really saves the day, which makes you wonder why the sidekick isn't getting top billing. It's about them, the story revolves around them. I know there are other characters who bail them out at times, but it doesn't feel like they steal the spotlight of what is their show. And I think the only reason this doesn't have me running out of the room cringing is because it's Rooster Teeth humor. Because it's Ray, and because it's Gavin, and because it's the company's stylistic brand of humor, that I can stay tuned in and laugh instead of hide behind my hands peeking out through my fingers. Or maybe that's adult humor on the internet and they can get away with it. That might be it too. The single greatest flaw with this show is really the same problem that Ruby Volume 1 suffered from. And that is time. In the case of X-Ray and Vav, they tried to fit an entire season's worth of content into four 10-minute episodes. And it does not work. Between every episode, it feels like I missed two episodes. It feels like I'm reading a book that had a chunk of its pages ripped out. It always feels like there's a lot more going on outside of what we're seeing that we're just not allowed to see, but the problem there is that it takes away from the moments we do see. For example, that moment between Hilda and Orph in episode two, it's beautiful, it's a testament to their friendship, it's heartwarming to watch, but we hadn't earned it yet. We hadn't spent enough time with either of them to judge this friendship for ourselves. It's not enough to just tell us about their friendship, we need more examples to be shown before you just thrust this kind of scene on us. And this bit right here? Yeah, well we're kind of badasses now. Being the only hope for the city does that to people. We've been training! Where was that? Why couldn't we have seen that? Even if it was just a fucking training montage, at least it would have been something other than just taking their word for it. This whole arc with the Mad King and the Core Power feels like something that could have lasted a full season, not four episodes. I understand that this was a test run, but I'm just saying, if it was a test run, maybe we should have started with something just a little bit smaller, you know what I'm saying? Something that would have felt natural fitting into four episodes. At least Ruby showed restraint in its first season, as bad as the time constraints were. This season is almost unwatchable with how disconjointed it is. I'm not trying to be an asshole here. I, I, I don't think I'm asking for too much, you know? Just that the size of your season be equal to the amount of content you're putting out. You know what it is, honestly? It's like after you've watched the extended editions of the Lord of the Rings movies. You can never go back to watching the theatrical cuts because it just feels like an incomplete films. This feels like there should, there's an extended cut lying around on the Rooster Teeth floor somewhere, just waiting to be viewed. Maybe they'll release it now that X-Ray and Vav is getting popular. I hope so, I really hope so, because right now, oh man. But overall, I'd say X-Ray and Vav is worth a watch so far. At the very least, it got me to enjoy a genre that I have not enjoyed before, mostly because of my own secondhand embarrassment, and mostly because it's Rooster Teeth humor by Rooster Teeth personnel. And honestly, with a full season to work with, this could be a really good show. It has the characters, it has the ideas, and it has just enough intrigue to be really engaging. It just didn't work with this preview they had here. Four episodes was undermining it heavily. 
but I think this has a lot of potential. I'm interested to see where they go with it next. So, despite my misgivings, I have to give the show a pass, and it's at least worth checking out. And uh, I really hope that my giving it a somewhat positive review will allow Orf to forgive me for the comments I made at the beginning of this review. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm just gonna go now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm just